is the Celebrity Afterlife Report podcast. Ah, uh, yo ho ho, and a bottle of Diet Pepsi. It's me, the celebrity medium, back with another edition of the Celebrity Afterlife Report, the ho 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 holy show. Anywhere that gives you the up-to-the-minute gossip about all your favorite to see celebs. Got a couple of new arrivals in the afterlife to tell you about this week and some follow-ups to stories from a few weeks ago. It's the usual deal that we do here on the Celebrity Afterlife Report every week. All right, let's start off with a new arrival, actress Margot Kidder. She was 69 years old. Of course, now she's immortal. Best known as Lois Lane in the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. She was good in that, too. Not the kind of actress that I might have cast for, but she kind of won me over with that. Now, in her real life, she struggled with mental uh, mental illness, specifically being bipolar, through a lot of her adult life. Uh, In fact, she was once found homeless by the police that's that's a very very difficult thing and uh, in her later years she got help for it and kind of got uh, healthy there was a nice crowd on hand for her uh, welcoming ceremony in the next world and she kind of surprised everybody because you know of course when you transition to the next world you don't know what's going to happen typically and all of a sudden there you are and some people kind of uh, fumble to come up with words to say to the crowd. It's really kind of an awkward situation, but Margot Kidder really stepped up. She walked out on stage, paused until the crowd fell silent, and then she recited the poem. If you remember the flying scene in the first Superman movie, he's kind of carrying Lois Lane through the air, and in voiceover she does this kind of uh, poem about, is this real, and that kind of thing, and people found it rather touching. Uh, asked by reporters, she said she's going to need some time to think about what she wants to do. I know that's not the exciting news you want to hear, but that's the case for a lot of people. They're in an entirely new situation. They simply need to kind of catch their breath. So I'm sure she will do that. And she'll figure out what, what works best for her, and we'll be following that as it transpires. Uh, author and bon vivant, <laughs> Tom Wolfe, just arrived in the next world as well. He was a, a novelist and also a founder of the so-called New Journalism Movement. You should look that up if you've never heard of it. It's kind of interesting. Basically, he combined um, almost elements of fiction with his reportage about real-world events. Or let's put it this way, he kind of enhanced his reporting. Uh, The movie Bonfire of the Vanities was based on his book of the same name. Very controversial at the time when it came out. One of his early works was called Mau Mauing the Flak Catchers. I always thought that was a great name. I don't even care what it's about. I just like the title Mau Mauing the Flak Catchers. It was about a party at Leonard Bernstein's apartment in New York. Leonard Bernstein was the conductor of the New York Philharmonic. A very uh, liberal person and uh, a socialite on the New York scene. And he and his socialite friends invited uh, members of the Black Panthers Party, Black Panther Party, and Wolf founded a rather absurd get-together, I gather. And he wrote about that, and that, that kind of ticked off some people. He also wrote several novels and liked to wear white suits wherever he went. That's why I said bon vivant. He says he expects to continue writing, but he, kind of like Margot Kidder, needs to get the lay of the land first so he can figure out exactly what it is he wants to write about. Now, I told you, I believe it was last week, that Steve Jobs and Walt Disney uh, seemingly have patched up their feud. They were at odds for months over the direction of Mediopolis, the town that used to be called Trump City, that they took over. And they had a falling out over what to do with it. Uh, Disney wanted to make it basically a, a theme park sort of based on Main Street USA in Walt Disney World and Disneyland. And Jobs wanted to turn it into a tech center. So they essentially drew a line down the middle and each of them ran half of it their own way. And they have since got together and patched it up and decided that they're going to cooperate. 
And the plan is that they're going to work on the first Disney theme park in the afterlife. Uh, word leaking out is that it's going to include Mediopolis in some form, which is Jobs uh, High Tech R&D Center. But the details of that have not been worked out. We do know, the one thing we do know is that if you've ever been to Disneyland or Disney World, you know there's a thing called the Hall of Presidents, where you go in and robotic American presidents speak to you, the audience. Well, that wouldn't really be appropriate as there are no countries in the next world, nor is there any uh, formal government. But they're going to have something at least superficially similar called a Hall of Human Greatness, which will include people from all throughout human history. That should be interesting. Now, this got a little controversial because they were asked if it would include Adolf Hitler. Now, the word great is not a synonym for the word good. But oftentimes people take it that way. When they think of a great man, they think of a good man like Gandhi. And Steve Jobs, I am told, looked a little perturbed at being asked that question. And he semi-patiently explained that greatness is not the same as goodness, but they're going they're using the word greatness in the sense that people understand it. In other words, they're going to have people uh, uh, audio animatronic figures of people who have been admired by other people. So Hitler, therefore, will not be included in the Hall of Human Greatness. Vern Schroyer, most famous as Minnie Me from the Austin Powers movies, says he is not going to go back into show business, uh, at least in the short term. He uh, was speaking to a reporter the other day, and he blamed the pressure of being a little person in the public eye, at least in part, for his drinking problem. And he had a pretty serious drinking problem on the earthly plane. He says he's still thinking about his options, but he would like to work with children in some way. And I think with that, we, we got through that one kind of quickly, didn't we? That's okay. We got everything in we wanted to say. Or why am I saying we? I guess it's the royal we. It basically comes down to me, doesn't it? All right, I'll be back next week with more up to the minute gossip about all your favorite to see celebs in the interim. Can you find it in your heart to inform others in your sphere of influence that the show can be found on iTunes? It can be found in the Google Play Store. It can be found on YouTube. And if you are in the Los Angeles area, you can find it on K Chung AM 1630, where it airs on Monday afternoons at 1 o'clock as part of a show called Inspirato Projecto Radio. I would appreciate that very much. In the meantime, be good to each other, be good to yourself. Uh, thanks for listening. I am the Celebrity Medium. You've been listening to the Celebrity Afterlife Report podcast. To ask a question about your favorite deceased celebrity, call 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-369-3732.